So, the last class where we started was uh, we started looking at the volume averaged multifluid models and we started to if you, re if you recall the equation we first did continuity. change the marker uh, to blue. Hmm. We did continuity and uh, this was using the volume averaging technique that I showed. This was the expression that we wrote. Okay. Now, this particular stuff actually designates the mass transfer from all other phases to kth phase due to phase change. Okay. Now, this we said is equal to summation of j equal to 1 to all the phases phi, but j is not equal to k. Okay. So, this is m triple prime j k. Okay. So, from all other phases it is actually summed over j. So, therefore, from all other phases how it is transferred to the kth phase. Okay. So, this basically represents the mass per unit volume. volume. Okay. And we also said that m triple prime j k is the same as minus m triple prime k j. Okay. So, uh, applying now converting this and also recalling that uh, rho k is nothing but epsilon k rho k this is the intrinsic and the extrinsic phase average. This is given as epsilon k rho k k plus epsilon k rho k k into v k k plus that is the expression that you get. Okay. These are basically the dispersive term. Which we defined in the last class. right? So, that is the dispersive term. We saw that what the dispersive terms are right? in the last class. So, if we neglect this dispersive term in many of the cases they are actually small. right? So, neglecting dispersion what we get is that is what you get. Okay. If you neglect the dispersive term, this is the net equation that you get. This is the continuity equation. Okay. So now, moving on, let us go to the momentum equation. Okay. Now, the extrinsic phase averaged momentum equation
Atlas. Okay, so this is basically the body force term, same for different species. if we assume it that way. Okay. Now, as per the rules that I covered in the last class, if you recall the rules, okay, so the first term will be, okay, you can represent this as minus 1 over delta V A k d a k. Okay. Similarly, this particular term, the second term, the second convective derivative, the second part of the convective derivative is given as Okay. Okay. Similarly, the third term, the third term, which is basically the stress term that we have, okay. And the last term okay so what we do is now uh, we combine all these three terms all this all the terms not three four terms together let's move to the next Uh, to the combining Okay. Right. So that is the total equation combining all the things together, the momentum equation, right? Now we can also from an extra from an intrinsic point of view. These are the expressions is equal to these are long lengthy equations, but uh, it is required to understand uh, the physics of the problem rho k v k v k minus v i dot n k d a k plus because of this additional terms that we are carrying because of the transformation that we did ok. 
okay so that's the expression that you get <coughs> whereas here tau k prime k is the phase averaged the phase averaged stress tensor it's a phase average stress tensor okay for the kth phase so that is what you have right so that is what it is so this stress tensor can be further written as corresponding the pressure this is the viscosity minus two third mu k okay so that's the stress tensor that you see now also uh, if you go back to the previous one let us put a couple of thoughts uh, on these on a few terms okay so, for example, this particular term over here, change the marker, this particular term that you have over here, what does this designate? This it designates some kind of a momentum exchange, right, okay. Now, the term, this particular term, what does this designate? This designates some kind of an interactive forces. forces between all other phases all other phases and the kth phase got it okay so uh, that is that is interesting so you can see that this is the nature of these two important terms that the additional terms that we have carried one is that one represents the momentum exchange the other represents the interactive forces okay so, if we go to this next page where we actually did all these things. So, the momentum exchange term the momentum exchange term if we look at it okay. when we tell that it is momentum exchange then it must can be cast in this particular form. right so that is the mass that was exchanged okay and this is the corresponding velocity okay at the interface okay so the intrinsic this is intrinsic phase averaged velocity averaged velocity velocity of kth phase at the interface. So, it is the intrinsic phase averaged velocity of the kth phase at the interface. Okay. Similarly, so we know that what this term will be, this term on the other hand the interactive force term okay, can be represented by some kind of a force expression now j not equal to k given by some kind of a f j k. What is f j k? This is interactive force between the jth force between the jth and kth phase. Okay. So, f j k is equal to minus f k j and can be written as some kind of a parameter k j k which we will come later what that parameter means. This is called 
something called a momentum exchange coefficient. Okay. So, momentum exchange coefficient. So, this essentially means that this is this is an ad hoc kind of a term and these are the velocities in the or the intrinsic phase average velocity in the two phases. So, this is a momentum averaged quantity. So, determining this particular quantity between phase uh, be between uh, phases j and k okay, is difficult. Right? It depends on the structure of the interface also, right. So, it is highly dependent, dependent on interface, interface structure that is the, that is a very crucial thing, right. So, how do you actually determine it? So, if we for example, have a vapor and a liquid system like can be vapor bubbles or liquid droplets whatever it is, the k j k is given by 3 fourth C D E J rho K D J V J J V K K. Okay. So, this is basically the diameter of the diameter of bubbles or droplets if it is a system like that. So, this is a very ad hoc example this is the drag coefficient ok. So, that is the drag coefficient this is the total expression. So, this is like one for liquid vapor system this can be cast in this particular fashion ok. So, uh, that is one uh, one way of casting the whole thing ok. So, now if we assemble the full momentum equation and this is just one example that we gave as the whole momentum equation becomes this is the full momentum equation ok. So, the full momentum equation attains that particular form ok. So, that is one thing. So, let us move to the next page. Uh, we can also similarly do the energy equation. So, once again we start from the extrinsic phase averaged. So, That is the extrinsic phase averaged uh, equation ok. <coughs> now, if we look at the each individual terms of this particular expression once again this term will be rho k h k d t minus these are long expressions as, as I said and uh, sorry.
So, h k v i dot n k d a k that is the first one. Okay. Similarly, the second one you can write it in a very similar fashion. So, Similarly, this third expression okay. and <coughs> so similarly, this particular expression over here or the PK expression can be written as so, these are all just you apply the rule that is it. Okay. So, I am not putting the a k always because you know that it is taken with respect to the a k. Okay. Similarly, the contraction part this particular part of the uh, expression tau k is, is almost equal this is equal to that and this is equal to v k tau k plus 1 over v. contracted on the tau k. Okay. So, that is the expression that you get. So, each and each, each and each every individual term is in this way taken care of and if we neglect the dispersions, if we neglect the dispersions which we have done in the case of your continuity and as well as in your momentum expression. Okay. And uh, so, that is an important part because if we neglect the dispersion part then all those additional quantities will just go off. Okay. So, if that is the case then we can write it in, in a holistic fashion. This is n k plus okay. 
okay. So, this particular part what you see over here okay, this, this p k sorry this is actually PK. So, this is basically the work done by the pressure and shear stress. Done by pressure and shear stress at interface. Okay. So, this basically completes uh, uh, this part of the energy equation. So, you know the individual terms if you look at it, it, it is pretty obvious that uh, this and this terms are particularly important and we will see what those terms are in the next lecture. But right now, so what we have done is that by neglecting the dispersion of the uh, dispersion of part of the energy equation, we have been able to cast it in terms of these equations over here. right? So, uh, we will see that what happens when you actually take the full volume averaged equation in the next lecture. So, we will stop here at this particular point and we will take it up in the next uh, lecture. Okay? Thank you.